So I am going to, if we're all set, yes. Don, you good? Yes, we're good. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order then. It's uh, 7.05 or 7.06 according to my calendar, my clock here, so apologies for the delay. Um, at this time, though, I'll ask councillors and uh, those present to stand for O Canada, please. Thanks, everyone. So I'll ask for uh, CAO to do the roll call for councillors. Councillor Sean Sampson. Present. Deputy Warden Michael Digden. Present. Councillor Melanie Sampson. Present. Warden Amanda Mumberkett. Present. Councillor Brent Sampson. Present. Okay, so um, we'll begin with any items added to the agenda. So do councillors have items they would like to add this evening? Councillor Melanie Sampson? Uh, just wanted to provide some information on oily waste sites in a notification that we received today to share with constituents. Okay. So could I have an uh, indication of consent to add oily waste sites? All councillors have indicated their consent for that. All right. Thank you. Um, additional... Um, Sorry, Councillor Sean, your mic was on there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, can I add uh, just a discussion on arena rates? Arena rates. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. So, could I have an indication of consent from councillors to add arena rates discussion to the agenda? Okay. We have unanimous consent on that. All right. And uh, I would also like to add an agenda. Uh, about the Cape Breton South Recruiting for Health Awards uh, that have just been launched. So if uh, it's just an information piece, so if councillors could indicate their consent for that as well. Okay, thank you. Any, f any further items? Deputy Warden? Yeah, I just have um, a brief one to add, I guess, for the, uh, the testing, for the uh, COVID testing. COVID testing? Okay. All right, could I have an indication of consent to add COVID testing to the agenda? Okay, we have unanimous consent for that as well. All right, any further items to add? Okay, so with those additions, could I please have a motion to approve the agenda? Councilor Melanie? I move the amended uh, agenda. Thank you, could I have a seconder on that? Deputy Warden. I'll second that. Okay, thank you, Deputy Warden. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, so that motion is carried. Okay, so we have two sets of minutes that were circulated in the uh, meeting package for this evening. So uh, the first is the September 27th, 2021 regular council meeting minutes. And were there any errors or omissions noted on those? C Councillor Brent Sampson? I'm just waiting for it to load, but I believe that was the ones might have stated it was in chambers, but I think it was a video conference. So the minutes that I'm looking at say video conference. Oh, no, okay, location council chambers underneath. Under the date. Oh, yes, I see, yeah, yeah down yeah. below, okay. So September 27th meeting was video conference. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> so if we could get the location changed to read video conference. Uh, any further errors or omissions? Okay, so could I have a motion to approve those minutes, please, from September 27th? Councillor Sean Sampson? Yeah, I'll make that motion. All right, thank you. Councillor Brent Sampson? I'll second that. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, so that motion is carried. Next are the minutes from October 4th. This was a special meeting, um, also conducted uh, by video conference. Um, so are there any errors or omissions noted on these minutes? Okay, so hearing none, could I have a motion to approve the minutes from the special council meeting of October 4th? Councilor Brent Sampson? I make the motion to approve the minutes from the uh, September 4th meeting, or was it October October, 4th? October, Sorry, 4th. October 4th meeting. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Brent. Deputy Warden? I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. So, any further discussion? Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. So, the next item on the agenda is the election of the Deputy Warden. So, maybe I'll hand this over to, uh, to the CAO to. Um, yeah, okay. Yvonne's going to pass out some ballots. So the deputy warden is a position that's elected each year um, at the council table from amongst the councillors, putting their names forward. Um, but Don, are you? Did you want to walk us through this, or um, or how did you? Yeah, we need to do. I think we need nominations. Yes, we exactly. Have, we may not be uh, yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So would anyone like to make a nomination for the position of deputy warden? Um, deputy warden. I'd like to nominate Councillor Melanie Sampson. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any further nominations? Councillor Sean Sampson? Sorry. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Councillor Melanie Sampson, do you wish to accept the nomination? I'm moving along at light speed here this evening. <laughs> I feel like I'm still in a rush from the last meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. All right. Are there any further nominations? Okay. Are there any further nominations from the floor? Any further nominations for the position of Deputy Warden? Okay, so hearing none, we have one name put forward, and uh, it's Councillor or Melanie Sampson. Um, do you wish to accept the position of Deputy Warden at this time? Okay. So I guess that being said, there's no no need to do any voting, and we'll call it a day. All right. Congratulations, and thank you, Councillor. Melanie, and thank you, Noah. <laughs> All right. So we'll move us uh, forward on the agenda. So the next item is a question period, which is restricted to items on the Committee of the Whole report. We do have a phone number to call in, and uh, we'll wait a couple minutes to see if there's any uh, any questions regarding that report, the, re the report uh, and the uh, items on the Committee of the Whole are all listed in the agenda package. So I'll just wait a minute or two. Oh, I do think we need music for this portion of the agenda, truly. I okay, so uh, that number was 902-226-9885. Okay, so I'm not hearing the phone ringing. We've waited a minute or two, and uh, so I think I'll move us on um, to our committee reports. So first committee report is Committee of the Whole. Uh, so we'll hand it over to the new deputy warden. The new deputy warden. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Um, so, Councillor Melanie, or sorry, Deputy Warden Melanie Sampson, it's over to you. I wasn't really prepared for this part, but here we go. <laughs> um, this is the Committee of the Whole report for the month of October 2021. The committee met on October 12th, 2021. The committee discussed J-Class Roads. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole 
and that the motion adopted at the October 4th, 2021 special council meeting be amended in order to revise the list of roads to be submitted by staff to the Department of Public Works from the list of nine to the following. One, Lobster Plant Road, Cape Oget, paving and culverts. Two, Langley Lane, Point Tupper, paving and culverts. Three, Sampson's Road, West Largoise, paving and culverts. Four, Marshawn Lane, Loosedale, culverts and repaving. Okay, so we have a motion from uh, the Deputy Warden uh, regarding the J Class Road discussion at Committee of the Whole. Could I have a seconder on that motion? Oh, C Councillor Digden? I'll second that motion. Okay, thank you. So, any further discussion on that item? Okay, so all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, so that motion is carried. Thank you. Back to you, Mel. Er, the committee discussed the appointment of a commissioner. I move that council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole and that Mr. John Bain, Director of the Eastern District Planning Commission, be appointed as the commissioner on the pro current private ways application. Okay, so the motion is made. Could I have a seconder on that motion? Dip Councillor Sampson? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion on that item? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. Deputy Warden. <clears throat> the committee discussed the Strait of Canso Gateway Project. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole and that the Municipality of Richmond County provide funding in the amount no greater than $5,000 to the Strait of Canso Gateway Project contingent on the majority of other municipalities following suit. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Could I have a seconder on that? Councillor Sean? Yeah, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion on that item? Question. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed the acting collectively project. I move that council accept the recommendation of the committee of the whole and that the municip municipality complete a call for expression of interest with the support of the Seniors Take Action Coalition regarding the Acting Collectively project. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Could I have a seconder for that? Councillor Sant Digden? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on that item? Sure. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed a vaccination policy. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole and that staff draft a vaccination policy for review at a future policy bylaw committee meeting. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Brent? I'll second that. Thank you. Any further discussion on that item? Question. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed the CB Run contribution agreement. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole and that the Cape Breton Regional Enterprise Network Contribution Agreement renewal be circulated to councillors for review and be brought back to the October 25, 2021 regular council meeting for approval. We have a motion on the floor. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Digden? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Uh, any, uh, sorry, uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion is carried. The committee discussed grant requests. I move that council accept the recommendation of the committee of the whole and that the grant request from the Isle Madame iFit Center Society be approved in the amount of $2,000 with $1,000 allocated from district fund number one and $1,000 dollars from district fund number two um i feel like these should be handled individually thank yeah, you Deputy Warden. yeah <laughs> uh okay so could i have a seconder on that motion councillor sean yeah i'll second that motion thank you uh so any further discussion Question. all those in favor please indicate by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed 
Okay, that motion is carried. I move that council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole and that the grant request from Raising the Villages Cooperative Limited be approved in the amount of $2,500 and be allocated from the Type 4 Regional Health General Grant Funds. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Sampson? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion on that? Questions. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole and that the grant request from Waterway Economic Development be approved and allocated as follows. $2,500 from the Regional Health General Grant Funds, $2,500 from District Number 4, $500 from each of the remaining four districts, 1, 2, 3, and 5, total $2,000. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Digden? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? Councillor Brent Sampson? Yeah, I, I'm <clears throat> looking forward to seeing this project move forward, but I, I did have some concerns as we discussed in our policy bylaw committee meeting, but I feel much more comfortable with it now. Um, some of the wording, you know, we weren't 100% sure on just in the policy, and, and I think hopefully we, we've moved to clear that up, but mm -hmm. this will make for future projects a little little easier for us to, to make sure we're on the right page. Thank you, Councillor Brent. <laughs> Councillor Digden. Yeah, Madam Warden, maybe um, just for clarification, I know I know it's broke down, but at the bottom line, it's just 500 from each district's total of 2,000. We just want to make sure that the clarification is the total allotted wasn't 2,000, but no. from them four districts is 2,000. Yes, that's right. That was correct. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Digden. So I, I was uh, hoping I could ask uh, the council's indulgence on maybe providing a little bit of information. Um, it was brought to my attention by a constituent that um, the, the recording uh, of the presentation that I had done about this uh, committee of the whole, I, I hadn't pressed my button when I switched seats. And so when it aired, um, I don't think people could quite hear and I see Becky nodding her head on that one. So, so if it's okay with council, I would like to just kind of recap a couple of the points about this project, just in the interest of transparency, so the public is informed about what, what we talked about then. Um, so thank you, um, seeing nodding heads. Um, so regarding this grant application, uh, staff had originally communicated to the applicant that uh, the organization, uh, the grant application basically didn't fit the, the policy. And I think to Councillor Brent's uh, point earlier, we'll be making you know, some ad adjustments with the wording of that. However, uh, the application I just wanted to, uh, to be clear is not for infrastructure work to be completed. It is to fund an RFP that will result in the creation of a preliminary conceptual redevelopment plan for the St. Peter's Canal boardwalk trail and public spaces. The RFP and any resulting conceptual plan would be the property of waterway economic development. They're not proposing any construction at this point, simply a plan which they would own in order to obtain any kind of permit or letter of authority, that type of thing from Parks Canada or any other landowner. They would need this plan to demonstrate the value of the project, so it really is a critical piece moving forward. Given that the clause in our policy currently technically doesn't dire directly apply to the end result of this particular request, um, I felt that council had the, should have the opportunity to discuss it, and, and I think the councillor councillors agreed. Um, I do want to let you know that I did rec uh, do some extra diligence on this, and I requested and received correspondence from uh, their lawyer to confirm that uh, Waterway Economic Development Limited is registered under the province of Nova Scotia, and that the nature of the business is not for profit development. Um, just in case anybody had questions about that as well. So, thanks for your indulgence on that. I really appreciate it. Um, I was uh, disappointed that that the original recording hadn't been picked up uh, with the audio. So which is my fault completely because I probably forgot to press the button. <laughs> All right, so is there any further discussion on that item? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed properties completely destroyed by fire. I move that council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole and that taxes in the amount of $112.60 for 2020 and $186.24 2021 be
be written off, which represents taxes on the dwelling only from August 21st, 2020 to March 31st, 2022 for property AAN 01363808 owned by Michelle Demers Kennedy, which was completely destroyed by fire. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Councillor Brent. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion on that item? Question. Okay, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion is carried. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole and that taxes in the amount of $284.37 be written off, which represents taxes on the dwelling only from July 8, 2021 to March 31, 2022 for property AAN 0249584 owned by Lisa LeBlanc, which was completely destroyed by fire. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Could I have a seconder on that? Councillor Digdon? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Question. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed a temporary borrowing resolution. I move that Council accept the recommendation of the Committee of the Whole and that the municipality enter into a loan agreement with the lending institution in the amount of $300,000 for the purpose of the St. Peter's and District Volunteer Fire Department purchasing a 2021 Ford F550 4x4 with a TriStar 12-foot custom aluminum rescue body. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Could I have a seconder? Councillor Brent. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Question. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. The committee discussed the workplace wellness policy. I move that council accept the recommendation of the committee of the whole and that the workplace wellness policy be forwarded to the policy bylaw committee for review. We have a motion on the floor. Councillor Sean. Yeah, I'll second that motion. So any further discussion? Question. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <laughs> Motion carried. All right. This concludes the Committee of the Whole report for the month of October 2021, and I move its adoption. All right. We have a mo motion to adopt the Committee of the Whole report. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Digdon. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion on that item? Question. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Right. Aye. Those opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. That was... A long one. Great job, De no. Deputy <laughs> Warden. Your first Woo! Committee of the Whole report. <laughs> and it was a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> go, go bigger, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to uh, ask De the Deputy Warden to maybe uh, turn her mic off, and I'll hand things over to Councillor Brent Sampson regarding the Fire Services Committee report. Richmond County Fire Services Steering Committee report. After breaking for the summer months, the committee has met once this fall to discuss the direction going forward and future plans. It was a productive meeting in which Deputy Warden Digden and myself were given a series of questions from members to which we will respond with answers from staff. Dry hydrants remain a topic of conversation to which we updated progress on that issue in that it is working its way through policy bylaw committee. Expectations of insurance rate increases this coming year are a serious concern for already cash-strapped departments. There was also interest in looking into possible further bulk buying options in order to save costs. Discussion was had regarding the funding model for fire departments currently being undertaken in Pictou County. And we've long known that multiple fire departments within Richmond County will be unable to survive long term given the financial, current financial model for funding. Therefore, I move that we ask staff to investigate how to enact recommendation number 30, 39 from the Fire Services Review, which reads as follows. Number 39, GA recommends that funding for fire departments should come from a general taxation rate. The rationale is that fire emergency services benefit everyone in the county and everyone should pay an equal amount. Okay, so we have a recommendation on the floor. I guess, Councillor Branch, you'd like to just open for discussion at this time, is that? Yeah, I, I make that motion. You're making the motion, yeah. okay. Um, so we do have a motion on the floor, so could I have a seconder on that? Councillor Digdon? Yeah, I'll second that motion. Okay, so further discussion? 
Oh, yeah, we've got uh, Councillor Melanie. So at the fire services meeting, that the idea of a singular rate was discussed and they felt it... it, re it, it I would say it wasn't unanimous, but it was by far the majority okay. um, that, that would like to look into this at least. Um, because I think they, they're very much understanding that there's at least three to four departments that are struggling now. And it's, um, you know, we're not given a hard timeline, but it's, there's not a sustainable future for them going forward. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, Councillor Brent. Um, and so I, I guess, so the, the, the motion is basically to, to look into this. It's, this is not to set it, right? So, that, so we're, just to be clear um, for the public, I certainly would want to make that really clear. Um, so this is an investigation being proposed now. Yeah, I, I was moving that we ask yeah. staff to investigate how to enact yeah. recommendation number yeah. 39. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Councillor Digden. Yeah, and I was just going to elaborate a little bit on uh, Councillor Sampson's discussion. It's, it's more or less to see... Um, I guess what avenues we have and uh, you know the difference possibly in the rate so whether it be just for an example for the people watching whether it be 11 cents 12 cents 13 cents 9 cents just maybe uh, I guess the factor of where the money would lie in each district and how it would be distributed okay thank you Councillor Digden any further discussion on that Question. okay so all those in favor of that motion please indicate by saying aye aye those opposed all right the motion is carried thank you councillor brent uh, oh, I just, the, the committee is set to meet again on november 24th 2021 this concludes the fire services committee report okay thank you do we need a motion to adopt that report yeah okay councillor brent I move that we adopt the fire services steering committee report. Okay, thank you. Could I have a seconder on that? Councillor Digden? Yeah, I'll second that motion. Okay, any further discussion? Councillor Melanie? I just request that maybe the report be circulated to councillors because I don't think it was attached to our package. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Councillor Brent, you could maybe f send that to Yvonne. Or she has it. Okay, great. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so Yvonne uh, will circulate that to councillors. Thank you very much, Councillor Brent Sampson and uh, Councillor Digden as well for your work on that committee. Okay, so um, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the second reading approval to amend bylaw number 50, Municipal Emergency Management Bylaw, in order to make a series of changes that were listed directly on the agenda. And um, the the amended uh, bylaw is included in the meeting package as well so you can see the full context could I have a motion to uh, approve the second reading for uh, as presented for bylaw 50 Councillor Digden oh sorry Councillor Sampson yeah, <laughs> Councillor I'll, make John. A, I'll make that motion <laughs> okay thank you <laughs> all right Councillor Digden I'll second that motion thank you very much <laughs> any further discussion all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. All right, so now we'll uh, head to the next items on the agenda, which goes to the CAO regarding a couple of items, first with Destination Cape Breton member at large. So we advertised for a member at large, as uh, instructed by council. We have, we have one individual who applied, as you can see, um, it's provided in your in your uh, package, uh, Cindy Walker. Okay. So there, there really isn't much discussion there, I guess. Yeah, and you know, and it's, I, I will say that I've had conversations with um, our current representative, who is Lisa Boudreau, and um, she's you know indicated to me that she enjoyed her time on count on uh, the Destination Cape Breton board. She does have some family commitments that are going to take her away this year. Um, and so, you know, she was, uh, she was, you know, willing to kind of step back from that role if that was the desire of council. Um, and, uh, and it looks like we have one other person who has put their name forward. Um, so any discussion by councillors on that? Councillor Melanie? I guess I just wanted to say that if we only got one application, this was a pretty good one. I think so too. Uh, <laughs> I was quite impressed with, with Cindy's background in terms of, in terms of tourism and, um, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking forward to, to what she'll bring to, um, what she'll bring to the position at the, the Destination Cape Breton board. 
All right. Thank you, Councillor Melanie. Councillor Sean? Yeah, I just want to reiterate what Deputy Warden Melanie said, uh, looking at uh, Cindy's resume and being involved in the tourist uh, business myself, industry. I mean, uh, yeah, it's great to have her on board, and I, I thank her for applying and look forward to working with her. I also want to thank uh, Lisa Boudreaux for her past commitments and efforts. Uh, Lisa's always been a, a great leader in this community and, and involved in tourism, so I just wanted to thank Lisa as well. Well said. Councillor Sean, thank you. Councillor Brent. Oh, I was just going to make the motion that we accept. Thank you. Um, yep. We accept Cindy Walker as the representative at large for the destination Cape Breton member. Thank you very much, Councillor Brent. Uh, Councillor Digden. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Okay, thank you. So any further discussion on that item? Questions. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? All right, that motion is carried. So we'll welcome Cindy Walker as our representative on the Destination Cape Breton Board of Directors. Um, and I'm assuming, Dawn, that staff will reach out to her to follow up with that. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Okay, back to you. Uh, as indicated in the uh, Committee to Whole report, we were uh, uh, asked to provide the intermunicipal agreement regarding the, the CB Ren um, organization. And you folks have had it. So. I think all we re really require is uh, to have signatures placed on that uh, on that intermunicipal agreement and forward it back to um, Carla. I believe, uh, yeah, Carla. Yeah. Okay, so I'm assuming everyone's had a chance to review it, um, and I think well, you know we already discussed at the last meeting that budgetary-wise, we had already made you know this is, is applying to this fiscal year, and we've already made that decision from a budget perspective. So, um, could I have a motion then to uh, sign to have the, maybe the warden sign? the uh, CB Ren contribution agreement. Councillor Sean. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Deputy Warden. I will second that. Thank you very much. So any further discussion on that item? Question. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion is carried. So Don, back to you. So as you all may be aware, uh, we endeavored with a few other municipal units to uh, to uh, have ED, the EDPC uh, coordinate the regional planning project as set out by provincial legislation, mandatory uh, planning, and uh, they chose Upland Planning Design Planning uh, Plus Design Studio to undertake that project. Um, I was in touch with uh, the lead. I think she's the. I think she calls herself the manager. Her name is Ryan, and uh, part of the uh, part of the process, part of the beginning of the process, is to have them come present to council. Um, and they they prefer to have it done sooner than later. So, so their 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 timeline is to have it done by the first week of November. Um, we would have liked to have them on, on the committee to hold meeting as a as a presentation. However, we have two presentations there. Um, however, we do have a special council meeting set up for. The first, so I was just looking at trying to see if council would would be okay with having that presentation at that meeting. Um, they really really want to have this prior to the eighth of November. They're, they're a little behind initially. They wanted to have it done a little earlier, but there were some scheduling is issues with other municipalities as well. So they pushed it ahead to around the first week of November. And if we can have it on the first, we'll be basically right on target. So and they can come in and provide us an overview of the project. And uh, you can you you folks will have an opportunity to ask them any questions. Okay, so this recommendation from staff then I guess is to have a presentation be the starting point uh, from Upland uh, Planning and Design, uh, for, be the starting point for our uh, our November first special council meeting. Councilor Brent, do we need a motion of that effect then? Would you like Not necessarily. It would be just it, you know yeah. just to let you know. I mean, we don't normally have. Uh, yeah. yeah, we don't normally have. Uh, presentation during council so mm -hmm. I just wanted to run it by you folks just to make sure it was okay to do that I, I mean I think that would be really great I, this is I yeah. think a, a critical piece um, it's very important uh, yeah. it'll be a very important presentation yeah okay. councillor Digden I, is there any chance maybe and Don you might be able to reach out to get any literature on it prior to the meeting just so that because you said if we have questions to ask it might be yeah yeah I'll reach out to uh, the folks at Upland and see if there's uh, I think there is there is a, a handout that they provide. I'm, I'm pretty sure, and there's like a, a slide, not a slideshow, but a, 
I'm sure there's a presentation that they put on the computers as well. So uh, obviously they'll have that in advance and for you guys to uh, to uh, review it prior okay. to the meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you. So it looks like we've got agreement to, uh, to have that at the beginning of our meeting. Thank you, Don, for bringing that forward. Okay, um, so the next item on our agenda then is, uh, I have a few items um, to discuss. The first is that um, it's been a year. Um, so <laughs> I'm not sure where the year went, uh, but I feel like it just passed by in the blink of an eye. Um, this is really our first meeting in our second year as a, as a council, and I just wanted to kind of take a minute to reflect on some of the things that have um, that have occurred uh, and, you know, just wanted to, I guess, offer councillors the opportunity to discuss, um, it, you know, because I think we, we march on from meeting to meeting and we kind of might forget some of the, you know, the little stuff. And I mean, I can't, you know, I don't want to talk about everything, but um, just wanted to kind of mention a couple key things like our accountability measures, reestablishing question period and to council agendas, doing the live stream options so the folks at home can uh, watch in real time. Um, you know, adding the action items for review to our agendas. We worked through our first budget together, which, which was a big, you know, a brand new process for all of us. We've introduced new policies and bylaws. We just had another great uh, bylaw and policy committee meeting this evening. Um, so, you know, we're working towards the best interest of the county. Uh, we did some investigation on, on the tax roll. We've passed up proclamations to observe things like Access Awareness Week and World Elder Abuse Awareness. And I, I see that Councillor Sean Sampson is wearing his mask. And <laughs> yeah, so, oh, and Becky over there as well <laughs> from Tell Hill. So, um, so just, I think it's really important to recognize things like that, things like the Right to Know Week, so that, you know, they're not just about a week, but they're things we think of all year long. Um, you know, you have to say that coming to that historic 10-year agreement on the fire services for Point Tepper was... Uh, was a highlight, uh, certainly for, for me. Um, and I just, you know, wanted to mention the committee that I'm particularly proud of is our Richmond County Accessibility Advisory Committee, which, you know, the Village of St. Peter's has joined. And so there's been lots going on. And I just wanted to, I guess, ask councillors um, if you have any plans to do any kind of a one-year uh, or a year in review, maybe to share them uh, with all of us so that, uh, so that we can kind of all benefit from uh, the, you know, the insight of each other's reflections on the last year. So any comments or questions on that? Councillor Melly, or sorry, Deputy Warden. <laughs> I'll get it right, sorry. It's all good. So this past week I actually did a, um, like a roundtable discussion with, with Adam uh, to be, to be uh, aired later, I think probably this week sometime. And we did talk a little bit about the year in review. And one of the things that I told him, and I, I, I'd like to share it, I think, at the table, is one of the things I think I'm most proud of is how we behave as a council and how we are able to come to the table and we're able to have conversations that we don't necessarily all agree on, uh, that we listen to each other's point of view, and, and that when we leave at the end of the night, we're typically joking and laughing as we go out to our cars. And I really value that piece in each and every one of, of our councillors and also our staff and how we're able to always find a bit of a common ground no matter what we do. So I just, I guess I wanted to say a thank you to everyone for that. And um, for me, that's probably what I'm the most proud of. I think with attitude like that, we're gonna get pretty far. Well said, Deputy Warden. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from council on that? Councillor Sean? Yeah, I just wanna follow up on, on Deputy Warden's comments. Uh, if you go back to our uh, debate at Talal, uh, I had said uh, if I was to give us all advice, it would be to not stop campaigning after the election. So like Councillor uh, Melanie said, uh, we come here uh, and uh, we campaign our ideas and we cam campaign our opinions and we do it respectfully and we do it uh, for the best interest of Richmond County. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, I want to applaud us and, and, and thank you all. Uh, it's been a pleasure, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm very confident that we'll keep this going in year, year two and for the rest of our term. So I also want to thank Becky and Dennis Talal and also thank our media mm -hmm. for always following us and, and, and keeping uh, Richmond County uh, informed of, of what's going on around this table. So thank you all, and I uh, look forward to working with you in year two. Great point, Councillor Sean. Thank you. 
So, I mean, I know I recognize we've done some really great things, but um, I think we all would recognize there's still a whole lot more to do and things we could be doing better. So, <laughs> so year two is, uh, is an opportunity for us to do that. So, thanks. For, oh, sorry, Councillor Digden. Yeah, no, I guess um, I'm just going to follow on the backs of uh, the new Deputy Warden and uh, Councillor Sean Sampson. And again, um, I agree 100%. You know, uh, we counseled and we... We worked hard to get where we're at today, and you know, every day we're not going to make the decisions that's going to please everybody in the county of Richmond. However, we will do our best to make the decision that's going to, I guess, benefit the county of Richmond. So just remember when we're sitting around this table that you know we're doing it not just for us, but for you as well. As you said at home, you know, obviously, again, we won't make everybody happy, but it's not only about making making people happy; it's about making things fair, and that's what we all campaigned on. And I am proud of the uh, the council and the staff that we have working here. So, thank you. All right. Thanks, Councillor Digden. Okay. All right. So, um, I'm not seeing my buttons lit up here. So, oh, sorry, Councillor Brent Sampson. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. Um, yeah, I'd, I don't want to be the, the bearer of bad news. I just think we, we've had some missteps along the way, whether or not they do sure. when the cameras are rolling. But I think we have some work to do on staff relations and so on going forward and I don't think that's an impossible hill to climb but I think if we work together we can get there and I think we all want to see this go in the right direction and hopefully we just keep moving onward mm -hmm. well said thank you okay um, so next item on the agenda is National Veterans Week so I added this because I received an email um, Regarding National Veterans Week, which is of course coming up, it is the week of uh, you know that of Remembrance Day, November 11th, and I wanted to just bring to the attention of councillors that the National Defense's National Veterans Week Speakers Program has developed a series of Canadian Armed Forces speaker videos geared towards various audiences and age levels, which they are I guess promoting the use of in lieu of in-person presentations. Um, they're going to start publishing those videos every day starting October 26th. Is the information that I got from the program coordinator and so I wanted to just open it for uh, discussion and maybe find out from staff about National Veterans Week is there is there um, anything sort of being planned by staff or do counselors have an idea about how we could potentially share these types of videos to honor uh, our veterans during that week so uh, maybe I'll begin with you Don if uh, if you wanted to add any comments to that um, normally we would we would place something in the reporter. Obviously, uh, the reporter asks us each year, so we, we do uh, we do place ads in there during Veterans Week. Um, and that's uh, that's pretty okay. much what we will be try to accomplish. Okay, thanks. All right. So, any comments from councillors? I'm wondering. Oh, sorry, uh, Deputy Warden. I, I think I'm probably going to say what you're going to say, which yeah. is maybe we could share some of these video links on our web, on our Facebook page as well, to just encourage people to to check them out and get some exposure there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. Was you know, if those videos are being done, then uh, perhaps we could uh, perhaps we could share them to the county's Facebook page. Councillor Sean? Yeah, could we also share them and, and have uh, Talal uh, post those videos on Talal? I mean, there's a lot of people in Richmond County that yeah. watch Talal. And so I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, that'd we be should great. Look, yeah. We could encourage Talal to, to, dis to show them as well. Um, and so what I could do is I could forward that email from National Defense to, to you, Becky. Um, and uh, and that way you could you can kind of tell it can coordinate with them directly. And in the meantime, um, Don, uh, you know, just from staff perspective, I don't would there, I don't think there'd be any trouble sharing that information on our Facebook page. So I'll for I'll, you have the email already, and we could ask uh, that that those videos are displayed, especially during the week of. It was in the package. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And all right, so that's a National Veterans Week. So the next item on the agenda was uh, the Rink Revitalization Program. And so I added this to the agenda because I, we had received a, an email from our MLA, Trevor Boudreau, regarding uh, the Nova Scotia Department of Communities, Culture, Tourism, and Heritage, announcing the availability of the Rink Revitalization Programs for projects that can be completed between November 2021 and March 1st, 2022. 
It's a program designed to assist uh, municipal, you know, groups, including municipalities who are operating rinks, to invest in the infrastructure that will, I guess, help with the sustainability of the facility. Um, the RRP grant is eligible for large or small projects. It includes infrastructure repair projects, such as replacing boards, upgrading refrigeration, or improving seating or canteen spaces. And you can put multiple revitalization and repair projects, bundle them into one application. Um, so I guess maybe I'll, I'll uh, you know, ask the CAO, you know, do you, you know, is, is uh, at, at the staff level, do you think there would be a need um, and, and an interest in pursuing this program? Well, the only, the only problem that we have currently right now is that we only have two uh, items related to the arena on our long-term plan. Mm -hmm. And one is uh, accessibility improvements, which we have begun already, and we have created some, uh, some infrastructure there to, uh, to accommodate uh, accessibility issues. There are still a few others that, we're, that we are waiting on, and I, I think it may, be, uh, it may be that we're waiting on the accessibility committee and the whole plan to come, to come into play uh, before we decide to, on what to do at the arena. The second project is the arena floor and the refrigeration system, and that's a massive undertaking that would, uh, that would certainly uh, not, not, not be, uh, not be uh, able to be done between now and March. Obviously, we have ice, and, and mm -hmm. uh, that's cer certainly a, an off-season type uh, project. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, we don't we don't have any other projects in the queue. Um, mm. as, as far as as far as some of the maintenance issues that we have at the arena, we've we've included those in our current budget. So. Okay. Um, Deputy Ward. When I looked over the documents, and I'm just looking right now as well, but I I don't recall seeing the need to have the money spent by a certain date like all i saw here was that there was um final report including proof of status received by march 1st but i'm just wondering does that mean that the project needs to be completed by march 1st did i like, i'm not sure that i so that was the information i i received yeah. from from trevor like because i just i copied this out or actually yeah. i think this is from might be from the guidelines even is that the projects can be completed between right? Like when I looked through the ring, the guidelines, mm -hmm. it, I didn't see a date that it had to be completed by. That doesn't mean that it's not there. I just didn't remember seeing that. So I'm just thinking about what you're saying, Don. I, like I agree, but if we want to do that work to the rink anyway, and if we don't have to have it done by the end of March, maybe it's something we should consider. Oh, oh, I mean, we could get that clarification, certainly. Um, so, you know, that could be something that we would ask staff to clarify is if, uh, is if the work needs to be done um, by that March 1st date. Would, uh, would councillors be okay with that? Yeah, I'm seeing some nods. I think, too, if there's, you know, because this project, because this fund, um, will include like small projects. I'm wondering if there's some of the maintenance type projects that might be eligible that would basically, you know, if they're, if they're things we've budgeted for anyways, could we access a cost share on there that would save us a few, a few dollars? So I'm wondering if we could uh, maybe ask staff to look at what's, what's been planned in the current fiscal um, and, and to see if there's an opportunity to offset with this rank revitalization fund. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh, sorry. I've got a line up here. So, Councillor Digden. Yeah, no, I agree. I was going to bring the same thing forward. Also, it says, um, you know, it may be something that we can look at. I know it's uh, replacing boards, you know, refrigeration, but it could also be the outside or any upgrades to the parking lot mm -hmm. or whatever. So, you know, $150,000 is a big chunk of change if, uh, if we're uh, eligible for all of it. I guess so. It might be something we may want to look outside as well as yeah. inside for. Right. And we would need just need to be keeping in mind we would have to have the other portion of the budget, right? So, and right. and I know we haven't budgeted for large scale things like that. So, but but it's worth looking into certainly. Um, Deputy Warden. I just wanted to say that I did see on the email that originally came from our MLA that it does say it needs to be completed by March first. Yeah. So it didn't say it in the in, in the, the document. Box. It did say it in his email, but I I would personally like a little yeah. clarification just to be sure yeah uh, but I would agree like if we had some things that were 
capital like, you know, that mm -hmm. we would normally be calling a repair. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we could, it might fit in there somewhere. Right. Okay. Uh, Councillor Sean? Yeah, so looking at it, it says one grant per year. Uh, is this something that's available every year? Or? So this is my first experience with it, but that's certainly something we could ask about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay, so maybe we could have a motion then to uh, ask staff to confirm the, the timeline, um, investigate some opportunities to, uh, you know, to offset our planned expenditures with this program uh, and to uh, find out if it is an annual program. Um, if we could have a motion to that effect. Councillor Sean? Yeah, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Digden? Yep, I'll second that motion. Okay, any further discussion? Discussion. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, that motion is carried. Thank you. So we have a review of action items from our September 27th, uh, as well as the October 4th special meeting. Um, so we're not going to be reviewing those. Just a reminder uh, to council and to the public as to how that uh, how we wanted that process to work was this is similar to our review of checks. And so if anybody has a question about any of those action items, you can bring it up now. Um, but we're not going to go through each of those items uh, in detail. Deputy Warden. So I. I just had a question on the action items from the September 27th meeting. Um, and so uh, one of them was to, for us to conduct a flag raising ceremony, a, a ceremonial flag raising ceremony uh, in, honor, in honor of reconciliation of truth and reconciliation. And um, I just, I'm just wondering about timeliness. That, yep. That's all I'm wondering about here is it is listed as still being pending, but mm -hmm. just, just curious in terms of, if we've gotten anywhere with with any parts of that and if yeah. it's if we should be removing it and planning it for next year yeah so I've had an initial conversation with Chief Wilbert actually the evening of the vigil in st. Peter's we talked about that and we talked about the um, having someone come in to discuss land the land recognition or the, la the land acknowledgement as well at the beginning of council so we are still in discussions about that I guess is uh, is how I would put it I've chatted with several folks on their staff as well so um, so I think you, you know to your point councillor Sampson the timeliness of that you know we may you know we may be into planning this for uh, for October 2022 but um, I personally would like to leave, let it sit there on the action items, just so that it gives us a constant reminder. Um, and then when it, we you know when when we are at a point where we've got a concrete plan, um, then we'll have the reminder to bring it back to council. So, any further questions on the action items, Deputy Warden? I feel like I'm talking way too much. I no, apologize. You're not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just the, the draft RFP. So I know that it said, you know, that we were to review it prior to our meeting, which was a month ago. And I know it was circulated prior to that meeting. Um, and so we've not, you know, I, from the email threads, I don't, you know, I don't think anybody's provided any kind of update. So I guess the question becomes like, what is our plan? We, we do need to get the RFP out for this strategic, you know, for, yeah. yeah. So just, wondering where we are with that. And I feel like we need to set a timeline mm -hmm. to either amend the RFP and put it out or, yeah, or just put it out as it is. Definitely. So j just for the, uh, I guess to bring uh, council kind of up to speed on the work that I've been doing on it. I've, uh, I sent it to the Cape Breton partnership to see if we could access a little bit of their expertise in terms of RFP development They're They're putting out an RFP quite often, you know, as our, uh, as a development agency. Um, and so I have received uh, feedback from Carla uh, that I've been kind of going through and I, uh, you know, also sent it out to uh, another m member uh, from a local community community organization who has expertise in that field as well and uh, so I'm, I'm right now at a point where I'm bringing all that uh, feedback together um, so I mean my feeling is I'd love to see this get out the door in November um, so that we could have consult you know I guess our strategic planning starting as quickly as January or maybe even some initial work in December if possible you would tend generally you would want to leave an RFP in advertisement for two to three weeks two would be your absolute minimum on something like that so um, so that's kind of where I'm at it with it now and I don't know if councillors have had a chance to review and might have opinions on it 
but um, I'm happy to kind of, I guess, sort of take the, the ball on that a little bit because it is, it is an area of my expertise. And, um, uh, but I do, I'm feeling the pain on the timeline. I, I would really like to get this thing out the door. Would council, uh, I guess, be supportive of maybe uh, mid-November to have a new, new version complete? That, uh, I, I'd like to get it done next week, but I'm just not sure given the amount of meetings that we have in the evenings. So um, could I, was, is that kind of generally, yeah? Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions from the review of action items? Okay. Oh. Sorry, the only uh, the only one I have would be from the special council meeting October fourth. Do we want to remove that action item? Well, we or amend it. Yeah, we ended up. It, it is the action item from the meeting. We did amend it um, in a subsequent meeting, and so the action items from that subsequent meeting will be will reflect that. Okay. Do you know? So okay. All right. Okay, so we have several items added to the agenda. Um, if there's no more questions on the review of action items. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, Deputy Warden, oily waste sites, I think was the first item that you had added to the agenda. Thank you. So this matter was brought to my attention by, uh, by a resident uh, probably a month ago, um, and the Director of Public Works had looked into it and provided some information, which I provided to that, to that resident and then spoke with the MLA a bit about it. But I just felt, uh, you know, this morning we received an email from the CAO with some information that was provided uh, by the Department of Environment and, and uh, our Department of Natural Resources and Renewables. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. Uh, and I just wanted to share a little bit of that with some residents who perhaps have heard about the oily waste disposal sites uh, that have uh, that were on crown that are on Crown land uh, currently, uh, which contained some materials uh, from the uh, Aero and Kurdistan groundings and from 1970 and 79. And I guess what I wanted to say to this is there is a bit of a briefing of that and, and um, I can provide more information to residents who would like to see it. But what's important is to understand that this is, um, this is an action that's being taken by the provincial government and they're looking to uh, create some roads into those sites, uh, do some testing just to ensure that everything is, is um, um, to gather more information. So they're going to do, for example, in the McIntyre Lake site, they're going to uh, do five test wells uh, to check that information. Um, and what will happen is once they do these uh, test um, wells, they're going to send those results to environment and climate change to talk about what other types of um, steps need to be perhaps done. And I think, again, what's important here is that uh, this is not something that's happening specifically, you know, just in, in Richmond County. It's something that's happening across the province. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, it's all in the, it, you know, for uh, caution, right? Um, and so we've also been uh, provided with a phone number, and I'll, I'll provide it here tonight because I think it's probably relevant, is that for folks who may have questions or concerns about any of this, um, they could call one nine zero two. 6347554 and you'd be able to uh, get more information and in addition to that the uh, Nova Scotia website the province of Nova Scotia's website uh, if you would search there under Aero or Kurdistan uh, you'd find some more information there as well and again I can provide some of that if anybody's looking for that so just wanted to sort of uh, bring it bring it to the attention because I think we'll we'll hear some things that will um, through the rumor mills I guess and just wanted to uh, direct the attention that this is a provincial government initiative versus a, a county-wide thing. Okay. Thank you, Councillor, or sorry, Deputy Warden. I think the public will be really uh, interested to hear that information for sure. Any questions for the Deputy Warden on that? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is over to Councillor Sean, I believe, uh, for regarding arena rates. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Warden. So, uh, Knowing full well that this was budgeted during budget deliberations, the arena rates and, and the new arena rates, uh, for the past couple of meetings, we've invested in recreation uh, with the Irish High Community Development Association and the High Fit Centre. So uh, I had a couple of residents uh, concerned about the arena rates when it came to uh, gentlemen hockey. Uh, so I would just like to, again, I, I know that we run the arena uh, the county runs the arena and uh, uh, most times at a deficit and uh, it costs us more than uh, the revenue we take in when it comes to uh, to the arena and the rates so um, 
you know, I, I know we're trying to justify, but again, I was just hoping that we could have an open discussion and maybe uh, talk to Laurier in the future and see uh, see what we can do when it comes to arena rates for uh, gentlemen hockey. Thank you. Okay. So, any questions for Councillor Sean on that item? Deputy Warden. Uh, I, I just wanted to add that I did have a bit of a chat with Laurier about it, just just chatting a little bit about where we were. Uh, I think there's maybe some public misconception that uh, that we also raised the rates substantially for minor hockey, and I guess I want to clarify that we did raise the rates for minor hockey as well, but not to the same degree as we did for gentlemen's hockey. And, and I definitely appreciate the need for recreation in the county and, um, you know, and hope that this does not affect the attendance uh, of of the gentlemen's hockey gentlemen hockey um, league, uh, and I guess the other piece too is is you know in speaking with Laurier, there hadn't been increases in a number of years, and it is it's unfortunate that it's all at one time, but certainly it's a good lesson learned I think by everybody that we're going to just need to make things a little more incremental. Mm -hmm. um, but you know we did need to play a little bit of catch up as as uh, Councillor Sampson said we we need to be accountable to the rest of the county taxpayers who are paying for a lot of the shortfall that it's happening at the arena currently. Um, you know, I, there's uh, there's some grant opportunities right now for age-friendly communities that have opened up, and my mind kind of goes to, you know, perhaps there's something there that could help even with the 55-plus uh, hockey league or something. So, uh, mm -hmm. and again, Lori and I talked about a whole bunch of different ideas, uh, and so I'm, I'm quite confident that he it's well on his radar in terms of what could work to continue to encourage the gentlemen's hockey league, both the 55 plus and otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I feel confident that he'll, you know, he, he'll do his best to, to provide some, what, you know, solutions if they exist. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any further comment on that? Councillor Digden. Yeah, I guess I just have um, a brief one. And uh, again, you know, as uh, deputy warden stated, um, you know, we, we did do a, a fairly large increase, I guess, or uh, we agreed to a fairly large increase. But as Councillor Sampson stated, it uh, it did affect the um, it it did and does affect the turnout for the gentlemen's hockey. I do know. Um, I can personally say that some of the teams have delayed their starting date um, or their pickup hockey almost a month because of the cost. Therefore, I don't know if raising the rate actually earned us any money or actually lost us money because the ice, even though it's there, is not being rented out. So it may be something that we can look at and consider in the next year. Okay, thank you. Councillor Brent, Sampson. I think the only thing I'd say, I think we've got to remember too, when you're talking uh, an average group using it is what, maybe 20 people, would you say, at a time, mm -hmm. like something yeah. like that? Yeah. So even the increase at $30 an hour, a buck fifty a person, it's not really all that much when you when you really come down to it, you know. Okay, thank you, Councillor Brent. All right, thank you for the discussion on that. Um, certainly, valid concern raised. So thank you, Councillor Sean, for uh, for bringing it to uh, to the table, and for the discussion. Okay, so the next item on the agenda uh, is the Cape Breton Regionals, uh, Cape Breton South Regional. Uh, Healthcare Recruitment Committee has launched a series of awards, um, and I am super excited about this. So I wanted to make sure that all of councillors were aware and that the public was aware that um, as of today, um, Cape Breton South Recruiting for Health is uh, is accepting award nominations through their website, which is capebretonrecruiting.com. And I'm going to be sharing that information on my social media pages, and perhaps uh, Don will send that off to staff as well to share. Um, so essentially, you know, the group had a lot of discussion about this. Certainly, the pandemic highlighted the critical roles that healthcare professionals play, in uh, and the sacrifices they've made to our communities, uh, particularly, like I said, uh, during this last two years. Um, so we wanted to be able to say thank you to healthcare um, professionals in the region. Um, so we've launched a Community of Care Awards campaign. Um, and what it does, it will enable community members to participate by nominating healthcare professionals in the region that they think have gone above and beyond. So we've got several award caddies, categories. We've got a healthy communities leader, a mentor champion, lifelong learner, a dedicated mental health, long-term and continuing care professional, and a series of healthcare hero awards 
we've also got an opportunity where you can honor volunteer uh, in the healthcare sector called the Making a Dif Daily Difference Award or recognize uh, an innovative business or organization in the medical field called the Making Your Health Your Business Award. So all the details on uh, those award categories are, going to, are available, I think, right now on capebretonrecruiting.com. I would absolutely encourage counselors and members of the public to really think about who has been a shining light in your eyes uh, in terms of you know, the health, you know, maintaining the health and wellness of our community and our community members. So um, those nominations are open until November 19th. So you have some time to think about it. Um, and then we will review, a uh, selection committee will be struck to uh, pick the award winners from within our Cape Breton South Recruiting for Health group. And then we'll announce the winners at a special event in December 2021, just in time for Christmas. So, um, so please spread the word. Any questions on that? Okay. So next item on the agenda is uh, COVID testing. So uh, Councillor Digden. Yeah, so I guess um, I'm gonna try, try and make this as brief as I can and as uh, easy, easy as I can, I guess. So there's a little bit of conflicting information, I think, in, uh, in what's being done or what has to be done. Um, I know the rich, at the Richmond Arena, and I'll, I'll go to that, the, uh, the minor hockey, um, Anybody walking in from minor hockey has to show their proof of vaccination, which is fine, but now they also still have to um, write their name, phone number, and everything else. I thought the provisions from the province were once you were double vaccinated, that the, uh, so I'm just, maybe this is a question I can ask the CEO or, or to look into it. Is it something that we can now move on from getting the names and phone numbers and everything else, since you are showing proof of your vaccination and Right, so each time, I think the provincial rule is you show your proof of vaccination and you, you need to have some kind of ID or something potentially if you're, you know. Right, you so, so, so your vaccination is your ID and yeah. the, the scan the scan barrier is out there where you can scan everybody's to double check. Um, the app is actually, you can download it on your phone. Yeah, that's right. Um, but, and I think Richmond Arena is the only arena that we, um, or, I sh sorry, I shouldn't say, I should say it's enforced at the Richmond Arena. I just want to know that is so that you, something so there's something extra happening at the Richmond yeah so you also have to so if it's minor hockey let's say for the peewees or the midgets so uh, a midget representation representative has to also sit there get write down your name write down your phone number for okay but i i was under the belief that the uh that that was the whole purpose of getting that second vaccination and the uh the barcode was so that you could eliminate that process okay i know the civic center in port hawkesbury doesn't do it and you know the um Member to a trading convention center doesn't do it. And okay, I so just, we're still we're still taking an extra step, I guess, is what I'm hearing. That's not required by the province. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe we could ask staff to look into that, because my understanding was it was the proof of vaccination plus, you know, if you're, especially if you're not known in the community, you may right, your driver, ID, your driver's your license or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know, Don, if you want to comment on that or if you want to just look into it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll check in with Laurier. Um, I, I I'm I'm not really sure exactly uh, uh, what that process you're explaining really is. I mean, I'm I'm assuming it's for contact tracing. I know that people can be double vaccinated, and when you go into a restaurant, you're still writing your name and your phone number down. So, um, I think that's probably the purpose for that. But I will find out, and I will uh, uh, report back to council okay. in an email, perhaps. Okay. That would be great. Um, sorry, Councillor. Sure. Yeah. So that was just one part. The other part I had was that uh, back back a couple months ago, um, I think it was. I believe it was posted on our website. Um, it affected one young girl for dance lessons, and we posted it. I think prior to the um, provincial posting. So the provincial posting stated that children twelve between January first, October first of this year will have until December thirty first to attend events and activities while they get vaccinated. Children after October 4th, 4th will have three months to uh, provide double vaccination. Um, but I do know that our, um, so I'm not gonna say our recreation department, I do know it was, I believe it was posted on our site that uh, you could not attend event, the event unless you were double vaccinated. So I do know one So for children was, 12 and under, or under, under 12? Under 12, 12, right. Okay. So, so one girl was 
I'm not going to say refused or rejected, but more or less turned away because of. Okay. All right. Um, I'm not really sure if that's the case, but I, I'm sure that the Recreation Department is following the protocols that were placed by the province and, and those that we had uh, posted on our website. So I, w I would dare say that, that, that they followed what the rules that they were supposed to follow. So maybe we could just um, get some, you know, if you're going to get some clarification on the rink uh, process that's happening right now. Um, and if this, for this individual case, you know, um, I just, I'm wondering if maybe we could get some clarity on what the specifics were. Like, so she was turned, she turned 12 bit in the last couple of months. Correct. So she was, <clears throat> sorry, she was of age that she, uh, she still would have been able to participate in dance. She would have had until December. Correct. Because she it, turned 12. But however, however, she was okay. not permitted to participate okay. through the County of Richmond regulations. Okay. Well, there, yeah, there may have been some kind of oversight there, a misunderstanding or miscommunication. So maybe we could ask staff to look into that particular situation, but I think we would probably need to know, and I don't know if we want, I don't think we want to say that here, but. No, I'll reach, out, I'll reach out to the parent to see if they're willing to. Yeah. And maybe work with, uh, with, uh, staff on that one sure. directly. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Digden. Okay. Sorry, I'm just making a couple of notes. All right, so um, I believe that brings us pretty well to the end of our agenda. We do have an opportunity for question period, which is restricted to the remainder um, of the, uh, restricted to the items on the remainder of the agenda following the, the committee of the whole. So I'll give it a minute or two to see if there's anybody with questions. We have a pretty light gallery this evening. <laughs> so um, the number to call is 902-226-9885. And we will max that out at 15 minutes, um, but I will give a minute or so to allow for the phone to ring. Okay, so it's quiet. Um, so maybe we'll move uh, on to the next item on the agenda, which is an in-camera session that we do have scheduled. Um, so I'll accept a motion from councillors to move us in camera, please. Uh, Councillor Sean. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Could I have a seconder on that? Councillor Digden? I'll second that motion. Thank you, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, that motion is carried.